All right. If you watch the um, rhetoric and writing lecture for this week, you know it's kind of long. So if you were able to get through that, I really appreciate it. That's some important stuff that we were dealing with, um, methods of persuasion and, and logical fallacies. So in that, because of that, I'll try to make this one yeah, really brief. This should be 10 minutes, I hope. Um, we're dealing with the story, a temporary matter here. And I'm also going to mention um, two readings for our journals and reading summaries. Take your best shot and women are disappearing and dying in Indian country. Um, and this is, again, week six, February 22nd to 25th, obviously Monday, the first uh, of the week, we have the holiday. So let's jump right in and, and get back to talking about this story. Now, you know, for essay uh, three and four, you're writing about the story Edison, New Jersey. So this is already jumping forward. This is the story we're going to base essay five and six on. But in order to get all of our readings done, I wanted to go ahead and get into it. So hopefully you got to read maybe the first uh, few pages of it last week, and then maybe you can finish up. It's a little bit longer story, very much like uh, Hills Like White Elephants, and then also in some ways like Edison, New Jersey, you have two, two main characters, or at least one, who's struggling with relationships. And in this case, you know, you'll see as we go through. So one of the things I've, I've asked you to look at with each story, not because this is a literature class, but just to help you understand and summarize the stories, is to think about characters and conflict. And um, we, we haven't really talked about conflict a lot, but uh, most stories have some sort of conflict going on. Now, it might be, you know, in a more action story, the conflict might be people actually fighting physically or something like in an action movie. Um, in this story, it's not going to be anything like that, but it's more of an internal thing and something that um, it's not a physical fight, but they're definitely struggling against something or with something in their relationship. So in this story, think about what are the issues these two characters are maybe struggling with as you read. That's one thing to hopefully keep in your mind. And, and then also, again, go back and think about the setting, right? This is where in Boston, Massachusetts, it doesn't really ever say that, but I think it lists some details that you can kind of gather that. And um, it's in the winter. They've had these ongoing power outages. So that's forcing this couple to kind of reflect and step back. They can't do their normal, you know, go to their computer or their TV at night because the power is going to be off and they're going to have to spend some time together. And you can tell as you read this, that makes them uncomfortable because they've been kind of ignoring each other. So let's look at some of the just real quick uh, uh, excerpts from the story, and hopefully this will help you work through it if I just share a little bit about what I think some of the main conflicts and where they come up. So let me read through these and talk about each one briefly. Six months ago in September, Shukumar, remember that's the male character. We have a, uh, a married couple living together. Shukumar was at an academic conference in Baltimore. So six months ago from our story, he went to this conference. He's working on his PhD. He's studying and not working, not earning money. So there's some conflict there too, and his wife's working. When Shoba, his wife, went into labor three weeks before her due date. So that's usually a, not a great sign if somebody is delivering early. It's not always uh, a really bad thing, but in their case, you'll see it was. He hadn't wanted to go to the conference. A member of the staff had found him. Now I skipped a little bit here just so, you know, basically he's at this academic conference out of town in Baltimore, so is a bit, you know, of a way from, from uh, Boston, so he can't just get home right away. And then at the conference, he's probably sitting in a meeting or something, and a member of the staff found him somehow among the identical convention rooms and handed him a stiff square of stationery, a little piece of paper. It was only a telephone number, but Shukumar knew it was the hospital. When he returned to Boston, it was over. The baby had been born dead. So there's their tragedy, right, that they're dealing with. Um, uh, there was a miscarriage, right? And so the baby was born dead. Shoba was lying on a bed asleep. This is when he finds her. He gets back to Boston to the hospital in a private room so small, there was barely enough space to stand beside her in a wing of the hospital they hadn't been on for expectant parents. So this is from pages two and three in our in our story. And that, again, remember the short story is is available if you go into the course materials folder. I believe it's in week four or week five, course content folder rather. Um, I think it's week five. Uh, last week, but if, four or five, I have to double check that. Uh, but it is there and it's a fairly long story again. So I'm just kind of highlighting some of the things to help you sort of settle in and think about the conflict that they're, so this is obviously a big issue um, that they're not really talking about, not communicating, not spending a lot of time together. And it was six months ago from where they are now as, as a, you know, as a couple still living together. And remember, the lights are going out every night. There's a power outage, and this is kind of now forcing them to sit down, have dinner together. There's, there's just no, they can't really hide from each other as much. Tonight, with no lights, they would have to eat together. For months now, they had served themselves from the stove, 
and he'd taken his plate into his study, letting the meal grow cold on his desk before shoving it into his mouth without pause. Bathsheba took her plate to the living room and watched game shows or proofread files with her arsenal of colored pencils at hand. So for a long time, for months now, they've just been ignoring each other. They don't eat together, um, you know, not talking a lot. And this is on page eight. So that's sort of, you know, part of their setup. Something happened when the house was dark. They were able to talk to each other again. The third night after supper, they'd sat together on the sofa. And once it was dark, he began kissing her awkwardly on the forehead and her face. And though it was dark, he closed his eyes and knew that she did. So now something's happened, right? They're, they're kind of, they're not sort of having much of a relationship. All of a sudden they're stuck together. The lights are off and it seems like the old flame is rekindling. So to speak, I don't know how we want to say that, but something's, you know, starting to happen with them. Um, that's page 19. So if you want to, as you're reading through this and from page 20, the last one I wanted to share, this has been going on for almost a week, right? The morning of the fifth night, Shukumar found another notice from the electric company in the mailbox. The line had been repaired ahead of schedule, it said. He was disappointed. He had planned on making shrimp malai for Shoba, but when he arrived at the store, he didn't feel like cooking anymore. So here we go. Now, unfortunately, they're having this rekindling of their romance somewhat. It seems like their relationship. And then the electric company is able to fix it quicker than they thought. So he's not even going to have the full week um, with his wife as he had, as he, as he had expected. And so he's disappointed, doesn't even want to cook that night. And again, so, you know, what's the conflict here? Obviously, there's a, they've had this tragedy. Um, their relationship is not doing so well. And you have to read the rest of the story uh, to decide are they. And, and really, honestly, when you get to the end of the story, we may have to you may have to tell me what you think. And, and I know you will in the summaries when you write. This will be for essay five and six. But are they going to stay together or are they not going to stay together? I think that's one of the big questions. And I think that's the, you know, the writer, um, John Lahiri, is kind of uh, asking us to imagine, are they going to stay together? Are they going to not stay together? Do they get over this tragedy? Do they not get over it? So as you read through, those are important um, uh, parts of the of the conflict and the characters, but also really partly the setting in a way, because the things that have happened to them, you know, are part of their world. So so take a look at the story. Again, it's, um, it's in the course uh, content folder and it's called A Temporary Matter. So this idea of this temporary situation uh, that brings them back together for at least for a short time. As always with the language, you know, you want to kind of think about how the story is written. Each each writer is going to do that in slightly different ways. And then point of view, who's telling the story? Is, is, uh, is it being told by uh, Shukumar or by Shoba? Or is it kind of somebody standing back as a third person saying he and she? Uh, that's also can be important in the story. And finally, again, keep thinking about those universal themes things that most people uh, would be, you know, obviously lots of people are involved either having their own children or, you know, they have family members who are pregnant and all these things that people go through. So most of us uh, in one way or another, all of us, I guess, have some experience with that. Um, and then different things like divorce or separation or being able to make a living and, and how men and women do that differently these days in some, in some way. So anyway, there's lots of big themes that come up in this story, I think, and you'll see those as you read through it. So for our uh, summaries this week, there's a reading called Take Your Best Shot. And again, this was written a couple of years ago, but I think it's interesting still because it has to do with when they were developing the COVID vaccines and how has that worked out? Is it is it working out? And what are your feelings about that? So that can be for your reading summary this week. And for your journal, um, it's an article called Women Are Disappearing in Indian Country. And this has to do with missing persons. Now, again, this is not going to sound like it connects to our short story that we're reading right now with uh, Shukumar and Shoba. There's no missing person reports or anything like that but it will come up in another short story that we're going to be reading later in the semester. Um, so called Barn Burning by a, a Japanese um, author. And so we'll be looking at that later. And don't worry, it's in English. So I'm not going to ask you to read in Japanese. <laughs> uh, bad joke. Okay. Um, so that is all, like I said, I'd make the reading uh, video short today, but do, if you haven't read through any of our three short stories, please do, if you can use President's Day as a day to, <laughs> to celebrate literature and, and, and get caught up with those readings because they're going to, you know, of course, make it a lot easier for you to write the essays as we go through. And again, uh, the reading with uh, Shukmar and Shoba, a uh, temporary matter, that's going to come up not until essay five. So you do have a little bit of time. It's going to be more important on essay five and six. And thank you for watching this video.